Meditation for Dummies, the second edition by Stephen Bodian, uh, a reference for the rest of us, a useful guidebook filled with clear instructions and helpful hints. Meditation for Dummies, the second edition. Meditation for Dummies, the second edition by Stephen Bodian. Forward by Dean Ornish, MD, author of Dr. Dean. Ornish's program for reversing heart disease. Part 1. Getting acquainted. There's no place like home, and you are already there. Now that I've constructed the metaphor of the mountain, I'm going to knock it down with one sweep of my hand, like a wave washing away a castle in the sand. Yes, the journey of meditation requires steady effort and application like a climb up a mountain. In uh, brackets, for more on effort and uh, discipline, see chapter 9. But that metaphor hide some important paradoxes. The summit does not exist in some fear way, place outside you. It exists in the depth of your being. Some traditions say in the heart and uh, awaits your discovery. In brackets, see uh, the sidebar, discovering uh, the treasure in your own house, in this chapter. You can approach uh, the summit in an instant. It doesn't necessarily take years of practice. While meditating, for example, when your mind settles down and you experience a deep peace or tranqui tranquility, sense your interconnectedness with all beings, or feel an uh, upsurge of peace or love. You are testing uh, the sweet water of being right from the source inside you. And uh, these moments inform and uh, nourish you in ways you can't possibly measure. The mountain metaphor suggests a progressive, goal-oriented journey, whereas in fact the point of meditation is to set aside all goals and striving and just be. As of the title of the bestseller by stress reduction expert John Cabot Zinn puts it wherever you go, there you are. Or as
as Dorothy says in The Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. And the truth is, like Dorothy, you are always already there. Of course, you are not going to give up all your doing and striving instantaneously and just be, even when you meditate, that something you work up to slowly by practicing your meditation and gradually focusing and simplifying until you are doing less and less while you meditate and being more and more. The following are a few of the stages you may pass through on the path to just being. Getting used to sitting still. Developing the ability to turn your attention inward. Struggling to focus your attention. Being distracted again and again. Becoming more focused. Feeling more relaxed as you meditate, noticing fleeting moments when your mind settles down, experiencing brief glimpses of uh, stillness and peace, becoming aware of your awareness. Most of the time you probably don't pay much attention to your awareness. Yet the truth is, it's crucial to everything you do. When you watch TV, study for an exam, cook a meal, drive your car, listen to music or talk with a friend. You are being aware or paying attention. Before you begin before you begin to meditate in a formal way, you may find it helpful to explore your own awareness. First notice what it's like to be aware. Are there times in your life when you are not aware of anything? Now complete this thought. I am aware of do this again and again, and notice where your awareness takes you. Do you tend to be more aware of internal or external sensations? <clears throat> Do you pay more attention to thoughts and fantasies than to your moment-to-moment -moment sensory experiences? Notice whether a preoccupation with mental activity diminishes your awareness of what's happening right here and now. Next, pay attention to whether your awareness tends to focus on a particular object or sensation or tends to be more expansive and inclusive.
you may find that your awareness resembles a spotlight that flows from object to object. Notice how your awareness flows without trying to change it. Does it shift quickly from one thing to another? Or does it move more slowly, make contact with each object before moving on? Experiment with speeding up and slowing down the flow of awareness and notice how that feels. You may discover that your awareness is drawn again and again to certain kinds of objects and events, but not to others. Where does your awareness repeatedly wander? Which experience does it seem to selectively avoid? Now experiment with gently directing your awareness from one focus to another. When you pay attention to sounds, you may notice that you momentarily forget about your hands or uh, the dis discomfort in your back or knees. Try to focus on one object of uh, attention for as long as you can. How long can you remain, remain undistracted before your mind skips to the next thing? And uh, here's perhaps the greatest paradox of all. If you practice meditation diligently, you may eventually come to realize that you've never left home, even for an instant. Developing and directing awareness, the key to meditation. Remember, if, as the old saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, then the journey of meditation begins with the cultivation of awareness or attention. In fact, awareness is uh, the mental muscle that carries you along and uh, sustains you on your journey, not only at uh, the start, but every step of the way. No matter which path or technique you choose, the secret of meditation lies in developing, focusing and directing your awareness. In brackets, incidentally, attention is just slightly focused awareness. And uh, I use the two terms more or less interchangeably throughout this book. See the sidebar, becoming aware of your awareness. To get a better sense of uh, how awareness operates, consider another natural metaphor, light. You may take light for granted, but 
unless you've developed uh, the special skills and the heightened sensitivity of the blind you can barely function without it in uh, brackets have you ever tried to find something in a pitch dark room the same is true for awareness you may not be aware that you are aware but you need awareness to perform even the simplest tasks you can use light in a number of ways you can create ambient lighting that illuminates a room softly and diffusely you can focus light into a flashlight beam to help you find things when the room is dark or you can take the very same light and uh, concentrate it into a laser beam so powerful that it can cut through steel or send messages to the stars keep likewise in uh, meditation you can use awareness in different ways to begin with you can increase your powers of awareness by developing concentration on a particular object in brackets for a brief list of meditation objects see the section different paths up the same mountain earlier in this chapter then when you've uh, stabilized your concentration you can through the practice of receptive awareness expand your awareness like ambient light to illuminate the full range of your experience next you can concentrate even further in order to cultivate positive emotions and mind states or you can use awareness to investigate your inner experience and contemplate the nature of existence itself these four concentration receptive awareness cultivation and uh, contemplation constitute the major uses of awareness throughout the world's great meditative traditions building concentration to do just about anything well you need to focus your awareness the most creative and productive people in every profession for example great athletes performers businessmen scientists artists and writers have uh, the ability to block out dis distractions and uh, completely immerse themselves in their work if you ever watched tiger woods hit a drive or nicole kidman uh, transform herself into the character she is portray, 
portraying you've witnessed the fruits of total concentration remember some people have uh, an innate ability to concentrate but most of us need to practice to develop it Buddhists like to compare the mind to a monkey constantly chattering and hoping about from branch to branch topic to topic did you ever notice that most of the time you have scant control over the whims and vacillations 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 of your monkey mind which may space out one moment and uh, obsess the next when you meditate you calm your monkey mind by making it one pointed rather than scattered and distracted spiritual stuff many spiritual traditions teach the uh, students concentration as uh, the primary meditation practice just keep focusing your mind on the mantra or the symbol of the visualization the advice and eventually you will attain what is called absorption or samadhi in absorption the sense of being a separate me disappears and only the object of your attention remains follow to its natural conclusion the practice of concentration can lead to an experience of union with the object of your meditation if you are a sports enthusiast this object could be your tennis racket or your golf club if you are an aspiring mystic the object could be God or being or the absolute in brackets for more on the spiritual benefits of concentration see chapter 14 and if you wanna use meditation to improve your performance check out chapter 16 even though you may not yet know how to meditate you no doubt had moments of total absorption when the sense of separation disappears gazing at a sunset listening to music creating a work of art looking into the eyes of your beloved when you are so completely involved in an activity whether work or play the time stops and self-consciousness drops 
away. You enter into what psychologist Mihaly Ksikzent Mihaly calls flow. In fact, Ksikzent Mihaly claims that activities that promote flow epitome Optimize what most of us mean by enjoyment. Flow can be extraordinarily refreshing. In 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 livening and even deeply meaningful. And it is the inevitable result of unbroken concentration. Opening to receptive awareness. Spiritual stuff. The great sages of China say that all things comprise the constant interplay of yin and yang, the feminine and masculine forces of the universe. Well, if concentration is the yang of meditation in brackets focused powerful penetrating then receptive awareness is the in in brackets open expansive welcoming we concentration disciplines stabilizes and grounds the mind. Receptive awareness loosens and extends the mind's boundaries and creates more interior space, enabling you to familiarize yourself with the mind's contents. Where concentration blocks extra stimuli as distractions to the focus at hand receptive awareness embraces and assimilates every experience that presents itself most meditations involve the interplay of concentration and receptive awareness. Although some more advanced techniques teach the practice of receptive awareness alone, just be open and aware and welcome to whatever arises they teach and ultimately you will be taken by truth followed to its conclusion receptive awareness guides you in shifting your identity from your thoughts emotions and the stories you your mind tells you to your true identity, which is being itself. In brackets, for more on thoughts, emotions and stories, see chapter 5. Of course, if you don't know how to work with attention, these instructions are impossible to follow, 
that's why most traditions prescribe practicing concentration first. Concentration by quieting and grounding the mind in brackets enough so that it can open without being swept away by a deluge of uh, irrelevant feelings and thoughts provides a solid foundation on which the practice of meditation can flourish. Using contemplation for greater insight. Remember, although concentration and receptive awareness provide enormous benefits, ultimately it's insight and understanding of how the mind works, how you perpetuate your own suffering, how attached you are to the outcome of events, and how uncontrollable and fleeting these events are that offer freedom from, from suffering. And in your everyday life It's creative thinking, free from the usual limited, re repetitive patterns of thought that offers solutions to problems. That's why contemplation is the third key component that transforms meditation from calming, relaxing exercise to a vehicle, vehicle for freedom and create creative expression. After you developed your concentration and expanded your awareness, you eventually find that you have access to a more penetrating insight into the nature of your experience. You can use this faculty to explore your inner terrain and gradually understand and undetermine your mind's tendency to cause your suffering and stress. In brackets, see chapter 5 and 11. If you are a spiritual seeker, you can use this faculty to inquire into the nature of the self or to reflect upon the mystery of God and creation. And uh, if you are a person with more practical concerns, you may ponder the next step in your career or relationship or contemplate some seemingly irresolvable problem in your life. In brackets, for more on the uses of meditation in ordinary life situations, check out chapter 15. Cultivating positive healing states of mind. Well, let's stop here.